With a rich background spanning two decades in marketing and innovation and a PhD in business management, our next guest has a passion that lies in AI and is a true futurist at heart. He has authored motivating and thought-provoking books on technology and the future of the internet, covering topics such as AI, Web 3.0, the Internet of Things, and blockchain. And I couldn't be more honored to have him share his knowledge and expertise today. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Nori Kenkaya, Vice President of AI Product Marketing at Intel to the show. Nori, are you ready to get radically transparent with me? Absolutely, Jen. And thanks for having me on your show. Absolutely. I have been counting down the days for this episode uh, to speak with you, to get inside of your head. We've got a jam-packed episode of, I would say, some of the most interesting topics. And before we dive into that, I think what I personally just want to kick off with, because you have quite a background, can you share a little bit about your role and your professional background? Um, maybe even currently how Intel is positioned in the market or right even deeper, how did you even become interested and so passionate about AI? Absolutely. Happy to do so. Uh, again, uh, I've been with Intel almost uh, in the last year, like less than a year actually. Uh, but before that, I was working at Microsoft for 17 years. And uh, again, I was heavily working uh, throughout my career on like, product marketing. I'm super excited about AI and it goes back, I think you highlighted well, uh, in my like university education even. So like, again, I, I don't want to bring <laughs> the old days, but like when I was working on AI 1996, so it was like, very, like I, I remember the chatbot that I built at the university and like, wow, like, I mean, this thing learns, yeah, like it's called, like it was the really early days of like machine learning, all this thing. And then uh, I had the vision of like, hey, this thing will become, and this needs like the, the compute power to, to make it happen. And over the course of the years, again, like I was, I never forget my passion about AI and like uh, it, it became like more obvious to the world that like uh, the things will definitely augment our intelligence with the tools and the software that we have on the systems. And uh, fast forwarding, like I remember the date that uh, we launched ChatGPT with OpenAI, like again, I was at Microsoft at that time. It was a November 30th, it was a big moment for the industry, I think, because now it became more uh, visible what's the capabilities of uh, AI for uh, the end users. And it was mind blowing. So I think we were now into this spiral of things, really like creating a lot of uh, content, creating images, videos, and uh, like the the fast pace of AI is gonna change every single industry and every human being on this earth. So that's uh, I'm always like thinking from the positive side. I want to be a part of that change, and I want to help. Uh, the world to become a better place with AI. And that's how like I see Intel is uh, mapping to that vision because uh, if you think about like uh, any computer that's uh, like has been powered in the last uh, 50 years, Intel played a really important role with the, uh, the technology behind. And again, it's the company that puts the silicon in Silicon Valley. So like that's that's how crucial and important is the company. And looking at fast forward, AI is just picking up. So people might think, hey, we are in the early days of uh, the boom and it will be a burst after that. I mean, maybe the articles will say that, but I always refer to Gartner's uh, hype cycle. Like we are approaching the peak. We are not at the peak, but... After that, like there is a plateau of productivity and things will go mainstream. Like you will not think about like where does internet comes today? Like similarly, hey, where does this AI comes from? It will be a mainstream approach. And I think Intel has the ability to make that happen because of the like the consumer uh, alignment with AI PC, creating a new category uh, for AI acceleration uh, with Intel Gaudi. I think we will unpack those, but with the software packages that we have, which is open source and AI will be a heavy open source 
uh, thing moving forward. So I think I'm super uh, excited about the future where Intel will bring AI everywhere. I am equally as excited for all of our listeners. If you're not following Nuri on uh, LinkedIn, I highly recommend now is the time <laughs> to start doing so, right? With all of these big things in the works. And I always like to say, right? Somebody, we, we, we know we're, we're positive people. We're excited about the future. But I always like to say, right? Somebody's glass half full is always somebody's glass half empty. So Nuri, what's keeping you up at night professionally, uh, I would say? I think AI is like a journey which nobody is an expert right now. So like every day we are learning and what keeps me at night is like, I know that tomorrow when I wake up, I will learn something new. <laughs> so that's that's the fast pace. Like, again, I haven't felt that way for a long, long time. So again, I remember the dot-com boom was the days uh, like where every day, wow, this can disrupt this business model. Like really? And like, again, I have experienced a lot of things with Web 2.0, again, we discussed Web 3, but but they weren't disruptive as AI. So AI is going to like really shift everything. And I know this is like going to be a big uh, change agent for everything on the earth. So like from healthcare, again, I think we will unpack that. But like AI will help us to live longer for sure. Like again, it, it will augment any um, patient's intelligence for healthcare professionals. It will enhance the education so we will be more knowledgeable in the long run than today and all the tools that we use like i think they will be seamlessly integrated with our brain so then it's not going to be even like we are not going to be humans or homo sapiens anymore we will be a new generation of species uh, with ai infused into our lives and body and minds that's that's going to be a like a massive change that I think uh, humanity has seen for maybe uh, many thousands of years. So again, like I'm super excited uh, to live in this uh, time uh, and age and then really experience this. Uh, so that keeps me at night, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, like you said, the growth of the AI industry and the speed in which it is growing is certainly something to keep us all up at night. Um, we never know what, you know, what we're going to see online in the morning when it comes to news about AI. I want to take it back to the basics. So not all the way back to 1996, but you know, some AI <laughs> basics, right? What do you think is something that we all as marketing leaders need to understand when it comes to, you know, let's say AI 101? <laughs> I think like, um, I, I will not go back in time, but like, let's look at today, for example, we are all discussing about generative AI. And if you look at any model like uh, GPTs, let's say uh, GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. I think Google has been a really big influencer on AI uh, with DeepMind and everything happened. But there's a specific white paper, uh, 2016 is the date, while the the, the Google team published that white paper on transformer model. And that changed a lot of things because we were always thinking like, hey, like adding up all this hardware end-to-end -end will not make the system intelligent enough. Mm -hmm. But technically with that uh, generative pre-trained models and really using some of the fine tuning uh, today and getting those outcomes through inferencing, it changed a lot of things. Like, I mean, from a marketing standpoint, so like my team uses AI every day. And when some of the tools goes offline, like, hey, I couldn't finish my job because this tool was offline. I mean, that's how embedded it is in our life. Like creating a creative copy, testing with audiences, but creating the the right, uh, like the video uh, yeah. content, uh, the, the image content, all the customized solutions for the audiences, but also like uh, it's preparing us for the, the next stage, uh, which I call it the adaptive AI. Because until now, uh, imagine all this GPT-4 uh, as of today, when we record this, like it has been trained on, let's say, roughly 1.7 trillion parameters. It's big, but it's the whole internet as we know it. But it is less than the 1% of the data available on the planet. There is 99% of the data 
available at the customer side. And again, like it's your uh, gold mine. Like you will not share it with public, uh, let's say, transformer models, and you will become a part of a public database. But I believe uh, with the changes upcoming, first of all, there will be a lot of uh, improvements for enterprise AI. Uh, so I'm super excited about like how enterprise customers will adopt AI and help their customers to use this. Again, I gave an example on healthcare, but think of like, uh, like I will give examples from US where I live, but like Epic, I mean, they have a lot of customer data and one of the solutions they have is really analyzing your data using the existing knowledge base of uh, all the customers uh, or in the healthcare industry, which are the patients. And maybe before you get a, like a cancer cell growth, five years in advance, or even maybe more, you will get like, potentially, you will get this. And to prevent it, you have to do this. Like, it's like most of the time you go to a hospital to like, to cure a disease you already have. Like prevention will increase the lifespan of humans uh, big time. And this is only possible analyzing data over data. And that goes back to adaptive AI. Generative AI will not be able to do that just looking at the data. It has to retrain itself. And again, that's a big uh, thing. But adaptive AI is the near future moving forward where the AI models will be more smarter by training themselves uh, without a human interaction. And uh, that, that's going to really a big shift in the, uh, the industry. So again, uh, I, I believe we will cover the security part of the things, but I'm still optimistic that this will provide a lot of uh, benefit for us in the long run. Listen, I agree with you, um, and especially you know in the healthcare industry, even in you know for B two B marketing here, you know at Octopus and social media management, and, and I think even we're seeing you know big strides in how it's helping our own customers. So yes, it's not life and death, right? Um, but where we all joke, marketers are usually the first to go in layoffs. Maybe not anymore when we're using AI <laughs> and we understand right how to use it better. Um, so you brought up security, and I want to I want to take a, a dive down that road, because I do think what's interesting when it comes to the topic of AI and what I hear a lot of CMOs talking about today is the security of a few things. So one, right, for organizations, for companies, right, you're using these AI tools, maybe you're giving away your secret sauce in order to pump out the right content. So what does secure AI mean for companies? Um, what is secure AI mean, you know, in general. And and then when it comes to individuals, right? So even thinking of the healthcare industry, I mean, we probably have to input some things about ourselves in order to be able to have this AI understand, right, um, years in advance and, and be, uh, you know, uh, not um, years in advance to understand our health our health status, what, preventative, that's the word I was looking for, right? Preventative healthcare. So, so just to, to wrap, right, to sum that up, what does secure AI mean? And then what does it mean specifically for companies and individuals? Why is this important that we speak about now, yeah. right before it's too late? <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> yeah. I, I think like, I, I give, will give an example, but like every industrial, let's say revolution comes with uh, some concerns. And one of the big concerns today with AI is the security, because this is something much superior in terms of uh, getting the data in the hands of everyone. So, and there's a maybe a border, what is personal from a, like a consumer perspective from enterprise, what's confidential. And those are important because that makes the company, uh, like the confidential data makes the company uh, valuable. So that's your assets, like all the years of accumulated knowledge on delivering a product. It shouldn't be just like given away uh, for <laughs> free. So again, like, I mean, uh, we will cover the open source thing. So that's a different thing, like to, to build new things. But same with your uh, personal data. Like you have to keep it personal because when it becomes a part of a 
generative pre trained transformer model it belongs to a like a decision making system which everybody can uh, access and again like i mean it might expose for especially enterprise customers a big risk and these are happened by the way so i'm just making that up like if the listeners go and search for it so a couple of customers trained uh, some devops solutions they put their the personal code on the system and said like, hey, can you optimize this code? Like every time you put an input for a generic public <laughs> uh, AI system, it uses this as a training data. And somebody else can say like, hey, can you write me the code for this? Thinking you are a developer in this company and the system really spills back all the code that the other developer from that company put it for training so like there has to build like there has to be like some secure ai definition so that's why when i define secure ai it's really ai for security and security for ai like th these are the two maybe uh, things that that's both really important i mean security for ai is like as we discussed like you have to date your uh, knowledge base and you have to use the, all the power of AI, but you have to put the guardrails to protect your privacy and uh, company assets. Otherwise, like it's it's really opening the world of uh, like AI to everyone. And you yeah. really don't want to do that, especially when it comes to some specific industries, but also on the personal side. And I will give a, a funny example, but maybe a scary example. But imagine, like you mentioned, I have authored a book also on blockchain, uh, but I like this example because it, it doesn't uh, represent a long uh, vision, but imagine you have an electric car, a smart electric car, and then at night your car needs to charge and like your neighbor has a solar powered system. So while you are sleeping, your car wakes up, opens the garage door, goes back to the neighbor's house, puts itself to the charge and really consumes and like pays everything on uh, like the tokens back to the system, gives back to the grid. But on the way back, like it's midnight, imagine, your car rushes back to the garage and somebody, maybe like an intruder or anyone, like I, hits that person. And like that person gets hurt, like the system sees blood on the street and immediately your car goes back <laughs> uh, to your garage, <laughs> deletes all the data because uh, with the AI, it knows that like there will be implications like, hey, the software was not written well. Like I hit a person, this will impact the company, blah, blah, blah. AI can think, like I you know, like, can correlate the things. And in order not to ha this happen, we have to really write down all the decisions that AI is making. So I call the decision tree blockchain, but like blockchain, what's good thing about blockchain is it's immutable. So it's like a ledger for a company. Like uh, if you're into finance, like you say like, I got $10 from this customer, I paid $5 for this bill, but you don't like you, you just write down those. And the end result is like, you still have $5 left. You just don't delete the 10 and put five. So like you never delete on accounting because you have to trace back all the things happen. So yeah, same with AI. Terms. They're important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we have to trace back these systems because first of all, we are not sure. Like, I mean, with adaptive AI and in the long term, like we, it will be really hard for us humans to analyze if the things are having biased decisions, mm. are those ethical decisions? And most importantly, I'm going back to secure AI. Are those the decisions that made us more secure or not? <laughs> like these are all like debates and we shouldn't trust AI as it is because it's in development and there is no central agency. I mean, if you want to fly a plane, you cannot just do it. Like you have to go through certification. You have to get a pilot license. You have to get an aviation industry certification. You pass through a lot of things. And then you fly a airplane and you still cannot go through the uh, residential areas. Like you cannot go down below that feet. Otherwise, like, I mean, you, you will be immediately turned back with uh, like US forces or whatever is the local authority. 
today you can just run an AI model. You can do whatever you want because there's no authority. Like, I mean, I think the European Union is trying to create that layer of uh, security and privacy and trying to regulate, which is an awesome thing because we need to do that. We are going so fast in the industry right now that I'm scared that we are, in order to get some profits in the industry, many uh, solution providers are shortcutting one of the most critical things like privacy and security, which should be the uh, first decision that like, hey, we have to protect the data, we have to protect the individuals, we have to protect the companies. So, uh, and it will take some time, but back to your question, I think that's the security way AI. And AI for security, like that's another uh, thing because the the threats, like the identity theft and everything will increase. I mean, I can make Jen's video, but using 30 <laughs> seconds of your face and voice yeah. and everyone can be fooled easily. Like imagine this is a huge threat for us because like we don't really know, like, are we real? Like is this thing was real? The bots can call people, request money, like your family members. And your identity is already like in yeah. many of the data. So like we need to implement AI for security. So that's another one because AI is so smart that it can analyze like <clears throat> it, if it this video is AI generated or the voice is AI generated, it will be more tricky in the future. But as humans, it's really hard for us uh, to understand versus an AI can go pixel by pixel, like understand the voices bit by bit. And really, maybe any suspicious activity on our accounts will be really analyzed early on. So a long answer to your short question, but like secure AI is like both AI for security and security for AI. And it's so important for the industry. And maybe a final word as Intel, like we put this as a core pillar in our uh, model. And really, we want to make sure our customers and uh, in terms of the commercial customers and also consumers we are not discounting anything on uh, the security. We want to make sure we are a part of all these alliances. And if you look at like the confidential AI computing that we announced with Azure, with Microsoft, it was one of the first, the things we did with Cisco on uh, private AI, it was one of the first in the industry. And we will keep uh, raising the bar in this sense. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you for answering that question so transparently, if you will. Um, it kind of leads nicely into my next question that I have, um, which are around the ethical concerns of AI in the workplace. What do you foresee or what are you seeing right now as some of the biggest ethical concerns of AI? Yeah, e ethics and AI are like uh, really uh, critical topics that we have to address again upfront. <clears throat> um, I mean, you have seen, I will start with the biases, but you have seen uh, like Google has been, like, as we record this in February, 2024, like that was a big thing going on with Google and Gemini, uh, where um, you ask, uh, let's say to generate pictures and it's in, um, you haven't expected that outcome. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so <Yeah>. and <laughs> like it, it is, it's becoming fun uh, to watch what's going on in industry, but it's a good, uh, like the test for all of us, because these things are still in development. Like nothing is like people think that, wow, I mean, AI will take over my job. Like the word is like over right now. So it's not like we have to think through that. We are in the early stages of AI by 2030, the total industry will pass like a trillion dollar market cap just in the AI uh, hardware and software space, which will create like a lot of opportunities. But as we are in the early stages of AI, uh, we have to put that guardrails for uh, creating that ethics built into the systems. And this will require a lot of uh, companies getting together because it's not an individual effort. So, and Intel is one of them. So we are proud member of PyTorch Foundation. Uh, and if you know PyTorch again, like Meta started all this journey about like, uh, how do we provide AI models with concerns on ethics? And again, like Meta has a lot of history around privacy and like everything. So they want to make it right with AI. So I really appreciate all the efforts. and. I think the industry appreciates the efforts. Uh, we learn from our mistakes. 
so does Meta. And then like what happened is PyTorch became like almost 95% uh, obfuscation layer for the developers that is used. So, and when you create that uh, systems in place for ethics and responsible AI, uh, if the foundation model is right, then the output will be right. So I think you cannot solve the problem in like all the uh, holes that you have, but if you if fix the problem at the root with frameworks and foundations, I think that's that's the right approach. And same thing with Google, like I think TensorFlow is doing an awesome job on uh, creating that uh, systems and hugging phase on top as the, let's say the big uh, inventory of all these large language models they're applying those uh, solutions on all the transformer models they publish on their portal. So it becomes really built into the solutions that's out in the market. So, but again, it's early days. We are just like starting this journey and there's lots to do, but that's a very important key pillar, as you mentioned, Jen. Yeah. And I, and I have to say, you know, when we spoke, you know, a few weeks back, um, you know, I think what really stood out to me was for you as someone who literally I feel eats, breathes, sleeps AI, right? Um, I really appreciated how we had such a transparent conversation about taking the right precautions early on so as not to threaten humanity. And I think that's so important. I think that's that's what makes you such a, a top thought leader and and kind of innovator in this specific field. Because again, as you as you shared earlier, some may try to shortcut some of the more critical important steps that may seem oh well once we, once we develop it we'll figure it out right but this isn't not this isn't something that we'll we're going to be able to just figure out right as it as it goes on as we see today right like there are still you know i'm in the social media space right and we see it even on the social media level of right there is it's kind of like the wild wild west in some ways um there is no regulations good bad you know who knows um, but I think now we are starting to see in retrospect after social media has been around for so long, right? We're coming at it now. It's like, okay, what kind of regulations can we put in place? How do we as organizations navigate social? But I think that maybe AI could learn a little bit from how social was, uh, you know, rolled out and say, Hey, let's, let's do the security. Let's take a look at the ethical components before this is all, you know, said. Absolutely. Again, right. Like, as you said. Like the companies will try to catch the AI boom, uh, and some of them are like believing, like, hey, we are late. Like nobody is late. So this is like still an emerging area, and we will have more transformation happening. So doing the things right at the first place is really important. So uh, there was a famous paper, uh, I think it's co signed by Elon Musk, like, let's slow down AI. So it's not the purpose. Again, like, I think there was a misunderstanding about nobody wants to slow down the fast pace, but like, we want to put the right levers in place that we are building something safe, secure, ethical, uh, and sustainable. So, one of the aspects we haven't mentioned is like AI consumes a lot of energy. So like, uh, <laughs> so that's like, nobody thinks like uh, how this works, but like in the back end, it's like millions of silicon chips uh, attached to each other in like gigantic data centers. Uh, and they use a lot of energy to power those up and also cool things down like these gets heated. <laughs> so, <laughs> and as Intel, we are really committed to drive that sustainable feature. So uh, you might have seen like we are committed to uh, carbon negative, uh, like not just zero, but like really trying to push the boundaries there. And as a manufacturing company, this is a big uh, commitment. So like, Already today, we are using all this uh, renewable energy in our plants and producing. And again, like maybe the listeners know, but Intel is one of the uh, big uh, companies. Again, like uh, just puts us in the second in the marketplace right now. But it will be bigger and bigger with the foundry uh, services that we announced. So. Last week, we made a huge announcement about Intel Foundry. So we are building the next generation uh, manufacturing factories for building the next AI chips. And again, this is going to really a big investment. And I want to emphasize, like, we are trying to make the things right uh, with sustainability efforts and using that uh, 
um, like factories designed with sustainability in place. And also when they go out in the market, let's say when AWS or Azure or Google Cloud Services use our platform uh, for AI, it will be consuming minimal energy with, again, like uh, helping to minimize the impact of uh, like humans on the planet. But again, like just those are areas that we haven't, uh, as a like a human species, we haven't think like, hey, let's shortcut, let's get the product out in the market as fast as we can, but you have to do the things right. And I think I'm proud to work at Intel because this is really like thought before that expansion happens in the upcoming years. Absolutely. So one, congratulations on the big announcement. Um, and, and two, you know, thank you and Intel for taking those steps, right? I think they're important, sustainable steps that, you know, to secure our environment, we need to be doing. So thank you to Intel. As AI gets smarter, in your opinion, what do you think we need to know? Um, if you ask me, like, maybe uh, early days of, like, when I was on Microsoft, uh, I was leading data and AI go to market uh, and I was thinking like, hey, this is like the first uh, things that will be reshaped is the basic things. And <laughs> I was quite stunned. It didn't come up that way. So if you look at like OpenAI launched the Sora last week, it was like everything is happening. Like imagine like between our two weeks back, the pre-interview and now that has been like five big announcements <laughs> on AI. So imagine like in the upcoming months, what will happen. But the uh, the quality of the things that comes is astonishing. Like, I mean, the, the videos are great. Again, that can be definitely improvements. Um, but this is, if you are doing a, let's say, a zero added value job, like I think there's a risk. So, uh, and you have to, like one of the things which happened to the developers, like, if you just like test a bug or system and you don't upscale yourself with the AI skills, you will be gone. Like because anyone who can speak a language, who can write on a computer, is a programmer right now. So because technically all the assets and everything built on the systems uh, was really delivering great results for developers. And as a matter of fact, I have a friend. Uh, he just deployed an app store application like and he was like explaining we go to hikes together as a family and then like i have an idea like there should be a habit tracker like i but i'm not a programmer how do i do that now he deployed without writing a single code using ai he wow. generated the code he published on the app store and it's available like i mean i was amazed <laughs> because this guy is not a like a, a specific uh, developer but that shows like the value like i mean He's optimizing the, uh, let's say, the content, like making it more uh, engaging with the audiences. And like, there's a lot of uh, maybe hours of spend with the, the developers. So I will think it, catching up the game is important, but you have to have your, uh, I think, human skills, which I add like creativity. So like, you can just ask, like, give me a cat on the moon wearing an astronaut, like, it's not creativity. It's just like prompt engineering. So, but thinking about a cat on the moon part is creative. Like AI will give you like the tools, like uh, with Microsoft's Copilot, you can just generate great uh, content on some of the things, but you have to be like how to make it engaging still lies on your background. Like you mentioned social media. I've seen like a lot of automated posts and I, I understand them with my <laughs> like yeah. eyes and I say, like, ah, this is just like, I will just skip this one. But when you see like real human touch on the things using AI, like really using as a, uh, maybe an aggregator and really fine tuning the things that makes a lot of sense. And I think there will be a lot of jobs that will be created uh, for that. So in a nutshell, if you're just like rinse and repeating all day long, and if you're not learning something new, your job will be taken over, <laughs> uh, but you have to add value. Like I think as humans, we have that curiosity in our mind and who is more curious will be more successful in the future with AI. 
Yeah, I, I think that's very well said. Um, and I think something that's interesting to me, and that maybe this is for another episode, um, but something that's interesting that you mentioned on social media, right? We see a big wave right now of, you know, thought leadership and experts. And now with AI, anybody can be an expert and anybody can be a thought leader. So what are these definitions going to look like um, in the future with, you know, AI so heavily used by many, many marketers, many individuals. So maybe a conversation for a different day. (laughs) Exactly. Um, We can unpack that for almost an hour. (laughs) We'll have to bring you back. Um, So with that said, there's, there's two more questions I have for you. Um, And and the first one is, it's a little, maybe it's a bit more technical, but just out of curiosity, what type of audit system, right? We spoke earlier about, right, in finance, you know, you have an audit line literally for every single thing and you go through these different audits to make sure your spend is, you know, where it needs to be and should be and, and what whatever else. So when it comes to AI, what type of audit system should we put in place in order for AI to be successful? Yeah, I think it all lays down into incentivization of the people. So like people should be incentivized to make the things right. Uh, Being worked on product marketing for a long time, I always say like, if you want the sellers to uh, sell your product, you have to pay them more <laughs> like, and they will immediately <laughs> shift. So that's one of the uh, basic levers. Like, I mean, it's the gives and gets, but of course, like the product truth and everything follows through and then the outcomes for uh, is right for the customers. But in a nutshell, I think it will take uh, a lot of companies, uh, including Intel, but like beyond Intel, I think there will be, I mean, the commercial side is one thing, but also the public sector plays an important role here. So as we discussed, like the roads and transport authority, the FD, like like aviation industry, like we have those authorities by reason because mm-hmm. we want to regulate some of the, the things which might go other ways uh, really bad. Like maybe you know the story, but like they didn't put seat belts on a car and they were like, nobody needs a seat belt. The car is safe until like like thousands of people died and uh, the regulator said like hey, you have to put a seat belt <laughs> and then yeah. guess what like people's lives changed so because uh, again the commerce is all about uh, profit maximization and uh, it's not only the commercial entities that has to decide on like what's right for the uh, the consumers that's why i highlight the foundation so uh, and maybe just opening that like B as Intel uh, is a big believer of open source. And one of the things I think open source uh, systems can provide is these, let's say, security systems, privacy systems, and like that regulation can be embedded into the open source systems uh, immediately, like at the beginning. So you don't have to worry. So you start with a set of rules and regulations. uh, And this has been, let's say, signed off by authorities. There should be definitely a legal structure in every country. And uh, before relocating to US, I was living in Dubai. There's a minister of AI in Dubai. So again, uh, yeah, like, again, like this was like way back, I think in 2020, I think it was the year he was assigned, but like there will be ministers of AI. And like, I think that that's a good, uh, a futuristic moment for us to think like, hey, this is gonna requ- require a lot of investment on getting the the right attention at the government level, at the community level, with the open source communities, but also at the corporate level. So it will be a balance between, I think, those three triangle pieces. Uh, like one of them cannot lead alone because then the companies will object. Hey, this is just like mandated to us. Uh, and or the communities cannot lead because then the governments and the corporates will not follow. So it's a good balance between the those three uh, to make it happen. But again, as I said, I'm optimistic. I think this will happen. So these are the uh, early stage. I mean, if you raise a child, like the the first uh, six months is tough because like, yeah, like I mean, they want to walk, they want to fall, like, but but they learn. And then after eighteen months, like wow, I mean, you you see the growth and what's happening and. Uh, I believe AI is in that uh, uh, crawl, walk, run stage. So we are still crawling and then 
those are the right times to put that reinforcement learning and like, hey, if you touch a hot place, you will burn. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, if you don't do that at this stage with AI, again, like it will be out of control pretty quickly. Absolutely. So listen, my last question for you actually has nothing to do with AI. It's okay. my favorite <laughs> question to ask our guests. And I know a lot of our audience waits for it. Um, so Nori, can you tell us something that we can learn about you that we actually cannot learn from your LinkedIn profile or if we ask AI? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a tricky question. So I wasn't prepared for it. So let me think through. Um, I mean, I'm pretty transparent on like LinkedIn, Instagram and all the others. So, uh, so it's hard to be finding that, uh, thing. Uh, but, uh, if I dig more, uh, like on my LinkedIn profile, you will not find it, but I, I, I love the nature. So again, one of the things, uh, we do as a family is like uh, we have an RV so like you, you will not see an ah, RV extreme. picture but like we live in Pacific Northwest so for the listeners like I live in Seattle uh, in Washington so it's a pretty green area with like Olympic National Peninsula and all the beauty of the nature uh, uh, so we, we love it so again uh, there's amazing lakes like Lake Chelan, Alder Lake and many others so we go camping and that's one of the things that you will not see me posting a like a <laughs> RV picture or a tent picture. Uh, but yeah, that's one of the things that I think charges me, my family, my kids. Uh, so we are pretty outdoor people and we love living in Pacific Northwest. Oh, that's fantastic. So listen, when my husband hears this interview, he's going to be quite jealous because it's his <laughs> biggest dream to rent an RV and go coast to coast. Um, and I think people think of Seattle as like, it rains all the time. Yeah. <laughs> like it does in Seattle because like, again, maybe a geography thing, but the Cascade Mountains, which starts like up from Canada down to California, it's an interesting block. Like all the weather that comes from the Pacific Ocean and all the desert weather coming from inlands of the US, they merge together. And we have like rainforest in Washington. So in the Olympic Peninsula, there's like amazing, like you can literally experience like snow, rain, sunshine, everything all together in a couple of hour distances. Like when you go through the passes, uh, the other side of the mountain is like <laughs> interesting. So again, you can play like in summer, you can go to the cooler places and winter, you can go to the warmer places, vice versa but it's an amazing geography uh, to visit for sure. That's fantastic. I'm putting it on my list. So with that said, Nori, if anybody listening in wants to be in touch, um, speak more AI, where's the best place to reach you? I'm a, like a pretty heavy user of LinkedIn. So again, uh, I think my profile, norikankaya.com, uh, uh, I have a blog on this one again uh, for a while, but yeah, like it will be great. Uh, just shoot me a message on LinkedIn. So I always check again. That's how we met actually, Jen. So yeah. like you send a message and then I responded. So like, I'm pretty <laughs> responsive all of this things. So it, it will be great to be in touch. Fantastic. Nuri, thank you for getting radically transparent today. And I look forward to having you back for episode, you know, another, another round of. Uh, Absolutely. I think AI will change <laughs> our lives drastically in the next, like, uh, 12 months so like i think if you do this next year we will just like laugh at some of the things oh, wow like this happened in just one year so that's the fast pace we are in right now i love it nori thank you so much thanks a lot Ooh.